a lot of times when we're doing a chemical reaction, we need to measure quantities of liquids and we might need to measure them a lot of different times. So one way we can do that in some cases is with a graduated cylinder. It's kind of handy. It's in your drawer. And if I wanted to measure out a few milliliters of sample, I could pour out some sample and that looks like it's 8.59 milliliters and I can add that to my chemical reaction and go on my way. Now that wasn't too hard but how often do we want to have to do that? If we have to add relatively small amounts in a known way over and over again to the same reaction or to a series of similar reactions, a graduated cylinder usually isn't going to be the best way to do it. So one of the things that we've got available to help us with that is something called a burette. Burettes come in a number of different sizes, but they all share a lot of the same features. So let's take a little tour of a typical burette. We start out with a graduated tube. And you see this particular burette is graduated all the way to 50 milliliters. And at the bottom of the tube, there's a stopcock to control the flow and a jet tip to allow us to dispense very small amounts. Now what about that stopcock? Here I've taken the stopcock out of a different burette and you see that it's just a little Teflon plug and if you look it's a Teflon plug that has a hole in it and the hole goes through the plug in the same direction as the handle. So if I've got my burette turned the way this one is with the handle lining up with the burette, that means that the hole is open and we can allow liquid to flow through this burette when the stopcock's in this position. If I give that a quick little turn, now the hole is blocked and we won't dispense anything out of that burette. So burettes are really handy for measuring relatively small quantities repeatedly. Now the thing we've got to remember about a burette though is that a burette is not good for measuring an exact quantity. If I wanted to deliver exactly one milliliter of liquid, I wouldn't use a burette because that's not what they're made for. The way we use burettes is by taking subtractive measurements. So let me get this set up and we can move on from there. So first of all, the liquid I'm using in this experiment is just water with some blue food coloring in, so I don't have to wear goggles for this experiment. So let's grab a stand so we can put up our burette. Here's a ring stand, like all of them that are in the lab. And we've got two choices. We've used clamps like this a few times. These, I typically call these three finger clamps because, well, they've got three fingers that grab whatever we want to clamp in place. Now we could use this clamp, but one of the things that we've got to be careful about when using burettes is that our burette is perfectly vertical. Because if our burette tips at all, it's going to make our readings a little bit more difficult and introduce a little bit of error. And we'll show you that in just a minute. So, we've got specialized clamps made just for your burettes. This is a double burette clamp made to hold two burettes. So first of all, it's always a good idea to mount the double burette clamp high on your ring stand. That tends to make things a little bit more stable once you have burettes mounted in it. So these are developed so that you can very easily with one hand pinch the two sides open and mount your burette. Now you'll also notice that on those little green plastic 
fingers that hold the burette are grooves and you want your burette in the groove so that it's vertical in both directions. Now that we've got our burette mounted in a stable clamp, we need to fill it. But first, do you really trust the last person who used that burette? I hope so, but we never know for sure. So even if this burette looks clean, this is a really long skinny tube. It's hard to wash the inside of that effectively. So before we fill up our burette, before we use our burette, it's usually a good idea to pre-rinse it with the solution, with the liquid that we're going to use. So I'm going to close the stopcock, take the burette off the stand, and that's a really tiny, tiny opening. And if I try to pour into it, I'm probably going to make a mess. So it's always best when you're using a burette to use a funnel to fill it up. I've got a funnel right over here. So let's put that funnel in and pour a few milliliters of the liquid that's going to be in the burette in. So now you see we've got a little bit of the liquid we're going to use in that burette. Well, how do we really wash the inside of this burette? Well, if you're very careful and you just give it a good spin, you can let that liquid run almost all the way to the tip, to the top, and bring it back down. Now we've rinsed the entire inside of this burette. And just to make sure, we've also got to think about what's going on in this jet tip. Because right now this is empty. So to clean that out, we also want to drain our liquid out through the jet tip before we refill the burette. So let's go ahead and drain that. Now, any liquid that's inside of this burette is the liquid that we want inside the burette. So we should be able to go ahead and refill it. Now the first thing that's going to cause trouble here is don't forget to close that stopcock before you refill the burette. So again, funnel. And now we can fill it all the way up to the top. Let's go ahead and mount that back in our stand. And are we ready to do our experiment? Maybe not quite yet. There are a couple problems, a couple things we've got to do first. We've got it mounted straight. But what about taking a reading? The whole purpose of using a burette is so that we can measure the amount of liquid we dispense into an experiment. So what about taking that reading? 